I'm Dave, this is Kerbal Space Program, and I'm going to show you how to go to the moon. So we're going with the single command pod here, not doing anything too fancy. I'm uh, going to get a parachute on top of it, a uh, decoupler underneath, and a uh, fuel tank. We're going um, wide and short on this for stability on the landing, because um, I'm really bad at landing. So again, the, the, uh, the heavy duty landing struts for the same reason. I'm angling them in a little, uh, that'll make it wider and shorter when we la finally land. That's uh, shift S to, to do that. Uh, tiny little engine on the bottom, don't need very much on the moon. And uh, another decoupler. And we're moving on to the what'll be the second stage. Uh, it's a pretty big fuel tank and a little um, poodle engine. Followed by another decoupler. Her jumbo fuel tanks, and underneath that, the uh, the huge mainsail engine. Um, just doing a little staging grouping here, uh, pretty straightforward. So the whole thing is is something like 12 parts plus the landing legs. Uh, really simple. So we take off vertically. Um, it's a little wobbly, but it'll get more stable once we get going. Uh, turn on SAS, max out throttle, and go. Um, you're going to have to do a lot of steering to keep it vertical. It's not very stable. Uh, so the first thing you have to deal with is this, this engine really loves to overheat. Um, so you actually have to turn the throttle down a little bit, uh, almost immediately. Uh, but other than that, you, you just keep it vertical and keep going. This thing has a really low thrust to weight ratio um, because I kept the staging really simple, like I could have used boosters or something, but we're, I was going for as simple as possible in this. So uh, we've, we've burned something like a third of the fuel and we're still just barely moving. Uh, but as more fuel burns off, the thrust to weight ratio goes up and it'll be fine. Uh, so still going straight up, I'm uh, going to do that until about 10 kilometers. Uh, then we'll start our turn to actually get into orbit. There it goes being not stable again. Finally starting to pick up a little bit of speed. So um, we're making this turn uh, to the due east or 90 degree direction, because uh, that's the, the direction that the moon orbits uh, Kerbin in, so we'll, uh, it'll make the transfer a lot easier if we're already going the right way. Uh, it's a really gradual turn. We don't want to... Uh, get going too fast, we're still in the, de the dense part of the atmosphere. Uh, the We actually want to hit a peak or the apoapsis of about 80 kilometers, so we're still only at 20, we still have a ways to go vertically. At some point your first stage will burn out. It uh, didn't get us very far, but got us where we needed to be for the next stage. fire the second stage. This one actually has a thrust weight ratio of less than one, so you might start out slowing down a little bit, uh, but it doesn't really matter. It has plenty of fuel. Uh, you'll, you'll still make it into orbit. Uh, right around now, I switched to the map view, and I use this the orbital map for pretty much the entire rest of the, of the video. Um, seeing the ship doesn't really do you much good at this point. So I'm looking here at the apoapsis, and I want it to end up around 80 kilometers. Um, but in addition to getting up to the right height, you also need to be going fast enough, which is something like 2,300 meters per second, so I'm only halfway there. So I'm basically pointing completely horizontal at this point, just accelerating. Uh, the closer you get to exactly that 90 degrees, 
uh, the easier everything else will be because you'll be going in an orbit around the equator. Uh, that's also the, the orbit that uh, the moon is in and the moon's equator is also lined up with that so it, it just makes everything easier later on if you're lined up perfectly. So I'm slowly raising the apoapsis while mostly accelerating. Um, when it hits, I think when it hits 80 kilometers, I just stop for now. Hey, we're in space. It's like I decided to keep burning uh, horizontally because it's not worried about too precise in orbit because uh, I'm going to be transferring to the moon pretty much immediately. So we need to get the periapsis above 70 kilometers, that's kind of the edge of the atmosphere. Uh, once we do that, we're in orbit. There it is, 74 and 98 kilometers. Not exactly circular, but good enough. So to transfer to the moon, um, you need to do it just as the moon's coming up over the horizon. Uh, so I was just a little bit too late to do it there, so I need to wait for another orbit around Kerbin. So as we get close on the orbital map, I'm actually going to switch back to the vehicle view to make sure I get the timing exactly right on this. Again, the, the closer you get now, the easier everything else is later. So it's a, a prograde burn, the direction you're already headed. About 500, 600 meters per second, I think. So I'm lined up. I'm just waiting for that moon to come up. I turn SAS on and off, um, kind of randomly when I remember, really, it's, it doesn't really matter, uh, but it helps, just kind of dampens out your motion, so it, it'll help you keep pointed in the right direction. There's the moon, and here we go. Back to the map. So burning on one side of the planet uh, affects your orbit on the other side. So you see the orbit's getting more and more elliptical, exactly opposite from where the ship is right now. Uh, and that's not where the moon is, but it's where the moon's going to be. As this starts to get close, I throttle down uh, quite a bit because things happen pretty quickly here. And again, a tiny change now can really screw you up later. So my moon periapsis here, I'm 
getting it lower. I, I actually want to aim for about 20 kilometers, um, really low. And this, you can adjust this later on pretty easily. Uh, but again, the, the sooner you make the change, the less fuel you're going to need to do it. Uh, time warping here. I'm going to stop as soon as I have the sphere of influence changed to the moon, uh, which is where that line turns yellow. And slowing it down, checking my orbit there. It's a little lower than I want, so I'm going to do a tiny little burn to bring it up. Uh, the direction for this is a little confusing. It's, it's kind of prograde, but it's a little bit off to the side of that, and the direction is, um, this is now the orbital map for the moon, so the direction is, a, is further away from where I'm pointed already, and, uh, that did it, just that tiny little burn. So now I'm gonna warp to that periapsis. When I get there, I'm going to be doing a retrograde burn to get into a circular or sort of circular orbit around the moon. Because if I don't, I'm just going to be sent right back into orbit around Kerbin. This isn't too big a burn, so I'm not going too quickly. Uh, you can see that orbit swings in. So obviously no atmosphere on the moon, you can kind of get as close as you want, uh, and it makes landing easier if you're, if you're in really close. So I've found about 20 kilometers works pretty well. I'm calling that good enough. Oh wait, never mind. That's pretty low, but again, no atmosphere. So I'm really bad at landing, uh, and kind of need to do it during the day, or on the day side. So I'm just warping through the night here. I mentioned earlier about uh, trying to stay lined up with that 90 degrees, and that kind of pays off here because now I'm orbiting around the equator. I'll land in a nice spot. My takeoff again will be easier. I'm gonna do a deorbit burn here, which is in the retrograde direction, just a tiny little burn. And I'm trying to aim for a reasonably flat spot. So we're not orbiting anymore. I switch back to the vehicle view. The most efficient way to do this braking burn is to wait as late as possible. Um, but I don't really know exactly when that is, and I get kind of nervous when I get uh, low and I'm going too fast. So I, I like to slow down uh, when I get to around 10 kilometers. Again, this is retrograde. Everything here is retrograde. And, uh... Oh, actually, it looks like I'm waiting a little longer. Probably going to bring it down to about 300 meters per second. And there's a crater right in front of me that I don't want to land on the edge of. So I think I'm going to drift over that. 
Actually, it doesn't look like I'm going to hit it at all. Get down a little bit lower. So the altimeter here will tend to lie to you a little bit. Uh, that's like above the average or, or some reference. Um, but the, the ground here is actually up at about a thousand meters, I think, so uh, you have to be careful about that if you're not using any mods or instruments. That's why I already have my speed down to about a hundred meters per second, even though I'm up at three kilometers. It's kind of convenient that my second stage ran out of fuel right here, because uh, I used it to gauge my uh, my real altitude. You can see it's it's uh, what 300, 400 meters away, 500, and there it hit the ground. So I'm I'm at about four or five hundred meters there. Uh, so I deployed my my gear. Uh, you can see how wide this vehicle is, and that allows me to hit the ground not quite straight down and still survive the impact. Uh, if you get below about 10 meters per second it gets really hard to control so I'm uh, keeping the speed up a little bit. See here I got too slow and it's starting to wobble. It's really hard to keep it pointed in that retrograde direction. If you get that close to your shadow, you know you're almost there. Eh, rocking a little bit, and that's why I made it that wide. Landed on a slope at an angle and it was still fine. So we made it! Now for the easy part. Um, take off. There's no atmosphere here, so you can start heading horizontally pretty much immediately. I'm going in the opposite direction I was when I took off from Kerbin, uh, 270 degrees. That'll put me in an orbit that uh, that makes it easier to to end up getting home. So again we can go for a pretty low orbit here um, and the orbital speed you need is much lower than around Kerbin. I think I, I was going for about 10 kilometers uh, for the orbit here. And again, if you keep it exactly in that 270 direction, that'll make the transfer home a little bit easier. Got my 10 kilometers. I think I'm just going to wait until I, uh, I get there before I do my circularization. Makes it a little easier. So this is prograde, uh, just a little bit to get into a nice circular orbit. Good enough. So the transfer home, uh, they actually do it around the far side of the moon, and then it uh, that allows the the uh, prograde burn around the moon to be retrograde around Kerbin. So it it uh, kind of allows you to combine two things here: uh, escaping from the moon and uh, heading back toward the planet. So if we want to go on the far side, we do a burn on this side again. I'm using that orbital line to kind of get my direction right. Good 
just do enough to get out of the sphere of influence here. So you can see I'm kind of halfway home already just from that escape burn from the moon. Now in orbit around Kerbin, all I need to do is lower my periapsis into the atmosphere and we'll be done. So uh, to do this, it's not quite a retrograde burn, it's uh, it's a little higher than that. You can see on the that uh, map on the bottom which way I'm pointed. As the, the apoapsis swings around toward uh, where my ship is, I can point more and more in the retrograde direction. thousand kilometers. I'm gonna bring it down to about 20 to get into the uh, the really dense part of the atmosphere. You don't want to hit it head-on or you come in too steep and decelerate uh, really quickly, which actually doesn't really matter right now, but you, I don't know, it just feels wrong. So that's 20 kilometers-ish. I'm gonna warp until I get closer. Pretty confident I'm gonna make it at this point so I can ditch my fuel, my engine, lander legs, all that. All I need is a capsule and a parachute at this point. Um, if you do that too early, the actual force of the decoupling can screw up your orbit. So I was checking there to make sure I did it in the the right direction. Um, you can wait a little longer if you're worried about that. So we start to hit the atmosphere here. Uh, it doesn't really slow down until we get a little bit lower. Again, it doesn't really matter yet if you're pointing the right way or not here, but it just feels wrong to, to go in backwards. You can see that G meter creeping up a little bit. Because it came in at such a shallow angle, it's uh, a nice gradual deceleration. shoot out. So I'm, I'm warping at this point, uh, but I slow that down before the parachute fully opens. The, uh, the physics engine can do some weird things when you're going that fast, uh, such as, you know, tear the parachute off. So uh, once it's deployed, you can speed it up again. And that's it. Made it uh, to the moon and back with a really simple ship. Hopefully that helps. Let me know if you have any questions.